Hello, I'm Lieutenant General Charles Hooper, Director of the Defense Security Cooperation Agency. In this video, I will speak about four of the many different foundational agreements the United States uses to facilitate the transfer of equipment and capabilities to our foreign partners. The four agreements I plan to discuss are Section 505 of the Foreign Assistance Act, Acquisition and Cross-Service Agreements, General Security of Information Agreements, or the variation, General Security of Military Information Agreements, and lastly, Communications, Interoperability, and Security Memorandum of Agreements. These agreements are not always required and represent only a few of the many agreements at the U.S. government's disposal. I'm highlighting these four because I often find myself discussing them most when I engage with my counterparts within the U.S. government, defense industry, and our partners and allies. I'd like to start with Section 505 of the Foreign Assistance Act. Section 505 agreements, as they are commonly called, are legally required before the U.S. government can authorize transfers of defense articles and services to any foreign partner under any Title 22 grant assistance and some Title 10 building partnership capacity programs. Section 505 agreements include five requirements to which the foreign partner must agree. First, the foreign partner will not permit any use of defense articles, services, or related training to any individual who is not an officer, employee, or agent of that country. The partner nation must also ensure the articles, services, or training will not be used for any purpose other than for which they were originally furnished. Second, the foreign partner will maintain the physical security of such articles, services, or training at substantially the same degree of protection as the United States. Third, the foreign partner will allow the United States government access to observe any such defense articles and will furnish information as needed to ensure compliance with these requirements. Fourth, the foreign partner will return any article, service, or training to the United States when no longer needed for the purpose for which it was furnished unless the president consents to other disposition. And fifth, the foreign partner will pay to the United States the net proceeds of any sale it makes in the disposal of the defense article, including scrap from any such defense article. As you can see, the intent of the Section 505 agreement is for the partner nation to acknowledge and use security and retransfer assurances with respect to U.S. defense articles and services that have been transferred under Title X and Title XXII grant authorities. The Departments of Defense and State determine if a 505 agreement is required and the Department of State Bureau of Political Military Affairs is responsible for establishing these agreements with each partner nation. Section 505 agreements can be accomplished via a bilateral or in some cases a unilateral diplomatic note. The next foundational agreement I'd like to discuss is the Acquisition and Cross-Service Agreement, or AXA. AXAs are authorized under Title X and establish the terms and conditions by which the U.S. may provide and or acquire logistical support, supplies, and services directly to or from eligible foreign partners. Axes may sound similar to an FMS or BPC transaction, but in fact they're very different. Axes must primarily benefit the interest of the Department of Defense for deployed forces and are not part of a grant program. Axes provide an ongoing agreement that allows for acquisitions and transfers as needed over a long period of time. Acquisitions or transfers executed under an AXA must either be in cash, replacement in kind, or in exchange of supplies or services of equal value in support of those forces. Most AXA transfers occur during wartime, combined exercises, training, deployment, contingency operations, humanitarian assistance, or foreign disaster relief operations. Given the nature in which AXAs are used, they are almost always exercised by the geographic combatant commands. Axes are authorized by the Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition and Sustainment. 
They are negotiated and concluded by the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff after receiving negotiating authority from the Secretary of State. However, prior to approval, they must be reviewed by multiple offices within the Departments of Defense and State. Establishing an AXA can take some time due to the level of coordination required. However, once an AXA is in place, it can be an invaluable tool to provide support to partner nations in times of crisis, contingency, or combined training efforts. Next, I would like to discuss a general security of information agreement known as a JSOIA and a general security of military information agreement known as a JSOMIA. These agreements establish the security framework for the protection of classified information or classified military information between the United States and our foreign partners or international organizations. The main difference between these two agreements is that the JSOIA addresses protection of all types of U.S. government classified information to include non-military classified information. A JSOMIA only addresses classified military information that is sourced from the Department of Defense and transferred to a Ministry of Defense. The purpose of these agreements is to ensure that our foreign partners have both the intent and capability to protect U.S. classified information in the same manner as the United States. These agreements establish a legally binding foundation for increased information sharing and enhanced interoperability by facilitating the transfer of classified, advanced, sensitive U.S. information and technologies. The Defense Technology Security Administration's International Security Programs Directorate develops, negotiates, and concludes these agreements after receiving negotiating authority from the Secretary of State. Conclusion of the agreements is normally accomplished through diplomatic channels. Like AXIS, these agreements can take some time to negotiate and conclude, but once complete, they increase options for potential solutions the U.S. government can consider to meet partner nation capability requirements. Finally, I'd like to discuss Communications Interoperability and Security Memorandum of Agreement, or SSMOA. The United States secures our armed forces in sensitive platform communications using state-of-the-art communication security, or COMSIC equipment, and related cryptographic material. A SISMOA is the bilateral agreement between the United States and select foreign partners that the United States requires before considering the transfer of COMSIC equipment. By entering into a SISMOA, the United States enables select foreign partners the capability to securely interoperate with U.S. forces. Conversely, the U.S. is also enabling those same foreign partners the capacity to fulfill their own sovereign defense requirements. A SISMOA provides the legal framework for the long-term safeguarding of COMSEC equipment used to establish and enhance mutual C-4 ISR endeavors and interoperability between military forces at the tactical and operational levels. Geographic combatant commands initiate, negotiate, conclude, and implement SISMOAs with specific foreign partners. SISMOAs provide a means for achieving secure interoperable communications or exchanging classified military information to enhance the effectiveness of mutual defense arrangements or coalition operations in support of global security objectives. The agreements I have outlined in this video are governed and implemented by a variety of offices within the United States government. Many organizations play a role in negotiating and executing these agreements, which can take months or even years to conclude. I highly encourage communication between the security cooperation offices, defense industry, and our foreign partners to ensure capability needs are addressed as expeditiously as possible. For more information on the legal requirements, benefits of, or process to establish these agreements, please refer to the appropriate governing office listed here, the Security Assistance Management Manual, or contact the Defense Security Cooperation Agency, and we will forward your questions. Thanks very much for watching, and stay safe out there.